In this video, we're going to talk about why you need to be careful when using volatility as a measure of risk for a, just a single firm stock. So risk is the chance that a firm's stock return is going to deviate or be different from the return that you're expecting when you buy the stock, right? So let's say that we've got two firms, firm A and firm B, and they both have the same expected return, right? But firm A, their historical returns have looked like this, and firm B, their historical returns look like that, right? Obviously, firm B is going to have more volatility, so it would be tempting, it'd be tempting for you to say, hey, look, I can estimate the cost of equity capital or the risk premium for firm B and firm A, by just looking at volatility, right? But you gotta remember something, volatility is a measure of a firm's total risk. Total risk, right? And so we can break that total risk out into two parts, right? So we've got the systematic or market risk, and then we've got the unsystematic, which is the firm specific risk, right? So let's, let's say that firm B here, let's say that that was eBay. So eBay, there are certain events that happen that are specific to eBay. Let's say the CEO gets fired and the stock market reacts, but there is also market risk, right? Just general economic conditions that affect not just eBay, but the entire US economy, for example. And so when we look at volatility, the volatility is including both market risk and firm specific risk. And you might be thinking, well, hey, that's, that's what I want. I wanna know total risk. But here's the thing, when you're an investor, you can build a portfolio of firms, right? Where you not only have eBay, you also maybe have Target, you have Microsoft, you have a number of firms, right? And as you increase this portfolio and include more and more firms, you're going to be reducing your volatility. Your volatility of the portfolio is going to go down. And the reason is, that you're engaging in diversification, right? So basically, diversification is the averaging out, the averaging out of all those firm-specific risks, right? And so if you can get rid of the firm-specific risks by holding a large portfolio of firms, then it doesn't really matter if eBay had some firm-specific risk because that can be diversified away. That's not to say that you don't care about any risk at all for eBay. Obviously, you need some way to evaluate risk to come up with the cost of equity capital and the market premium for eBay stock, right? But the, the way you do that is what you really want to isolate is the market risk, right? So you, you don't really care about firm-specific risk. You're going to diversify that away and so forth. So really, you don't want to be think. if we're trying to think, well, how do we estimate the cost of equity capital for eBay or the market premium? We don't want to be thinking about volatility because that's a measure of just total risk. What we really want is a measure of market risk, which is going to come from eBay's beta, right? And we'll, we'll talk about that in a future video. Now, this is not to say that we don't care about volatility when it comes to something like the portfolio itself, right? When we think about a portfolio, we could actually compare multiple portfolios and we could take into consideration the volatility of the portfolio. I'm just saying here volatility for a single stock is not a good way to estimate the cost of capital. We want the beta, the market risk. Now with the portfolio volatility becomes important, we're actually gonna talk about something called the sharp ratio where you can actually compare different portfolios and basically see which which portfolio gives you more bang for your buck in terms of the excess return that you get per unit of volatility and we'll talk about that in the video